Okay, so I'm getting ready to do the doublers for the fuse. I've I spent a lot of time researching before I started building on the fuse. And they have you the plans I just followed the plans. They have you making a doublers, you know, so there's some doublers I gotta do. And I'm using foam tack. This one is a slow video here, but um I'll say that the fuse went together great. I didn't have any any real problems uh, at all. It took me a while to figure stuff out sometimes from the plans and and from the instructions. But um, I, I'm very happy with how the fuse went together. Like I said, no no problems. Um, it was a little confusing doing stuff because you're, you know, the way you work in the right and the left. So I, I took a while to make sure I had it right so I didn't screw it up. Because I figured once you glue onto that rather thin balsa for the sides, there'd be no going back. It was very important there to get them lined up on the inside. Or I've got that inside pin, two pins there. So I was real careful watching watching that corner down there to make sure it was lined up and to make sure it was lined up in the center. Right there, I was checking it again, checking it, checking it, and it was good. I let it dry and then I switched to do the other side. Like everything you do, this is going fast here now. It's like the more you do it, the, the better you get at it. And uh, the foam tack works great, man. I, I tested it on... I've used it on balsa before and it works well. The only thing is it, it's it's kind of wet so the the um you know you got to watch how much you use. That's why I just kind of put it on kind of thin. And there I'm happy. All right, here I'm building the firewall. That's the firewall and then the piece that, that's up on the top of it there that is where the pin on the the front of the wind wing goes into that hole to hold the the wing to the bottom of the fuse so i'm gluing it i already made sure i had had the orientation right because it's real easy to mess these up if you're not careful because the instructions aren't that clear all right so now we're getting ready to put the first of the braces in for for the fuse and that is the top of the fuse fuse right there I've got pinned to my board and I've got T clips now I bought T clips because you got to have T the T on the clips is for like when the glue sets so you can twist it to break free of the glue I found that out the hard way when I was using those straight pins you know, because I, I bent a bunch of them using pliers to twist them to pull them out. And, and I've, I'm just using it in, um, I don't know if it's a gift card or, or something. It's a plastic, like a credit card. I'm using that as my straight edge to make sure that I've, I've got those perpendicular to the fuse. They said it was important. And the one in the back, the little one in the back, it has to go, it had to go a certain way as these did too. So like I said, I test fit everything together to make sure I had it right and just kind of laid it out before I went ahead and glued it. And there I'm test fitting the side. I've test fit it before that too. And I'm using medium CA and I'm just gluing it on in sections so that I can make sure that it's it's in straight. And I, I added a lot more CA than what you see in the video here. I went back and and, and poured more in the cracks make sure everything was you know saturated and it's it's pretty sturdy I mean if it survives sanding is where you can stress where you get a good stress test and um, I haven't I haven't sanded the fuse yet but it's ready to sand as soon as I finish this video today I'm gonna go ahead and sand it but here we go getting the side on like I said man I just um, I've got two monitors. I got one monitor up shows the parts, and the other shows the ins the steps that I'm working on. And um, Sig does a good job of laying out the manual. 
the plans were off. The plans, you know, like when you put the balsa on the plans, there's like about a, a two to three millimeter difference, you know, so the, the, the parts didn't match the plans exactly, which made the only, the only time it, it was a factor uh, was when I was making the, um, the wings in the horizontal and rudder and the vertical stab and that's why I met the vertical stab in the rudder and the horizontal in the elevator because if you wanted to lay it out exactly to the plans you, you got in trouble that's <laughs> but here we go this piece right here that is that is um, what you're going to screw the screw that holds the wing on so it's got to it's got to fit in there and it was kind of it wasn't a hard fit, but it was it was tricky because you've got you got all these sides you got to glue it on. So I was working fast, and I kind of skipped over a section there to get this piece. Make sure I got that piece in glued really well and in place in the right place. And then I kind of went back and got the center section between between the those last two braces down at the bottom. And I'm taking my time, I'm making sure I've got everything lined up right. Now I'm going back and getting the part I skipped. Because the the top bends up. It's not completely flat. It bends up, so you got to hold the sides in and bend the top up. And you know, so I mean it's a little and you, and you can't right I can't glue any more forward right there because the top has to come up. Now I'm going back and making sure I've got everything. Putting the bottom, getting the bottom in, gluing the bottom in right there. That's pretty much straightforward. And then there's a little piece that's right up there by the pin on the front, on the right, and the bottom. That's that's the thicker plywood that the um, tail wheel will screw into. I grab it and I'm putting it on now. And I let all this stuff set in between doing it. You know, it's not like I went bam, 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 boom. Because I, I think even CA needs a little time to cure. Now here, here's the, you know, where you got to press in and down, press in and down, press in and down. But it was pretty much straightforward. I just took my time, just went a little piece, a little, you know, section at a time. Working with medium CA, you got a little bit of a work time, but not a whole lot. Like there. Now we're now this gets tricky here where you gotta put these braces in. Yeah, that's where the wing the peg of the wing comes in and hits. So that's a pretty important piece right there. And I think there's another piece that goes on top of it. Yeah, see there. I'm just making sure the the bottom fits, the sides. Everything fits, yeah. And there's the top piece. That's what the landing gear group glues into. So that's that. That's pretty important. It goes on top there. I got to make sure I got it right. And I, th I think I had to trim a little bit on that. Those tabs that they go into. It didn't want to go in, so I put it in the tab first. Kind of had to pop it in there, right there. It popped in. Yep. Now I got it in. I don't know. I used. I think the, the the medium CA is going to hold. And I went back, I, I saturated everything, so it should be pretty good. Because I've used CA, you know, in, in balls. And I, you know, I, I test, I, I always test. I'll take scraps and glue them together and then pull them apart. And, you know, if I see if the wood pulls before the glue pulls, I'm happy. You know, I'm making sure I'm saturating everything there. And it, it was real hard. To, I mean, it was it was kind of tricky to get everything to fit together right there. It would have been real easy to screw that up. Fortunately enough, I didn't screw it up. I took my time and made sure. You know, practice dry fitted, dry fitting, dry fitting. I, I bet I put that thing together like I could probably do it in my sleep. I practiced it before I glued it. Pretty happy with that. All, all, like I said, I'm very satisfied with how, how the fuse went together. Now I'm going back and getting that center section that I skipped. 
instead of trying to hold it to, uh, you know, I, I did the important brace first and then went back and got the center section. Now I'm going back and making sure everything's got plenty of glue going through the cracks. Gluing the front pieces together now. Happy, satisfied. There's the battery tray. It goes in there and slides down. It's a tight fit. I mean, it's it's a. I, here I've got to trim off where the laser cut and where it was on the parts tree. Just trim that off, and I'm using um, Elmer's wood glue. I, I decided to use that on the battery tray and the rest of the front end, because the battery tray is probably it, it's where the front of the the fuse gets a lot of its strength from. So I'm gonna go ahead, little 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 Elmer's wood glue. I like Elmer's wood glue, man. It works well. I can't remember what I used that Elmer's wood. There, there. I'm I'm pretending to lick my fingers. I didn't lick my fingers. You know. So. Now we're getting ready to glue the fuse or the firewall on. I like how they designed the the firewall. You can build it up in layers. You've got like I've got two quarter inch rings to help space the motor. And even after I get finished with the fuse, I still am going to have the cowl to do. And I got to cut the cowl and the canopy, and fit everything. So I'm gonna when I when I'm finished sanding the fuse, and I've got a, I got a little sanding to do on on the wing. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna fit everything together. Here are the using the battery hatch, using the hatch to get that front board on, and I glued a, a small board on the that battery hatch by the keyboard there, a little tongue to go under it, and I don't know if I'm gonna put like a little twist clavis or a battery, or I mean a magnet to hold it on. Now we're doing the top, the top braces. These these were kind of I had to do I had to do a little bit of drilling in the holes because I'd gotten some CA into the notches that these fit into on two two of them. So I took my time, um, got out my pin drill and drilled out the CA and it took a while and used a uh, used my um, razor knife to cut all that hobby knife to cut all that CA out. I took it some time took some time getting these glued in there again using the credit card is a um, you know to make sure a straight edge makes sure everything now this piece here it tilts back it's supposed to be like three I forget three and a three eighths or something like that CA ended up measuring it getting it set getting the angle set I probably could have tipped it back more but you know it looks fine and as they say, it's on there. I want to thank you for watching. You know, here I'm kind of I'm letting that set just to make sure it's good. Now, now I'm cutting the stringers for the back, measuring them. There's five of them. Got them ready. Don't need the. I thought I cut. Oh, I just turned the light on more. Now we're dry. I'd already dry fitted them one other time, and I'm, I'm going ahead now. And I thought I could pull them out and put the CA on and then put them in, but you know, after doing the top one, it was a little little sketchy. So I decided just to put them in and then just you know, crack flood the cracks with um, CA. I like it. It's gonna. I think it's gonna. Uh, I'm excited. I'm I'm looking forward to try and covering the stuff I think it's gonna go fine it's funny it's after you get build it you get it covered and everything you still got an arf to put together <laughs> ah. man I can see why people that if they crash something they've built from scratch why they get so excited my goodness man I mean I got I got time in this but you know this is a pretty this is a pretty simple kit to build you know it's not real complex but you know, you just take every all the steps one step at a time. And I'm real happy with how all that fit together. I was a little worried about the little one, the little little brace. 
in the back. Because, man, I think it was hard to get out of the, the parts tree. I had to use the hobby knife to cut the little tabs that they left to hold it on the tree. I had to be real careful not to break it. I almost knocked my CA bottle off. Everything's there. Right, I'm just checking the field, making sure it's good. Now I'm going back and flooding. Pretty happy with that. Alright, now we're going on the front. I was worried about this uh, piece that I got a piece of um, balsa that I have to bend the curve on the top, but I just followed their instructions and, and it worked well. Getting those little little center braces there, putting them in. You're going to use the credit card again to double check. And I just took my time, followed their instructions. And uh, I don't know. I, sp I, I this video is eighteen. There's eighteen parts to this video, and everything after the first two minutes is sped up to four times the speed. And I was going to make this two parts, and I I didn't. I just left it as one. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I know it's long. And some of you probably you know you may not have seen this part right here. And then here you got to sand. I sanded more. This is kind of the sand for the camera, you know. And then now I've had to find a cup in the in the one of our plastic cups that was three three and some inches to, for that circle. And now I'm just going to use the hobby knife. I know I, I got a bad camera angle there. I should have probably cut it left-handed. I could have cut it left-handed, and you probably would have seen more. But I just took my time and cut cut the you know cut the balsa with my with the hobby knife. And then we're going to clean it up with sandpaper and get it nice and smooth. Again, most of this sanding here is just for just for um, the camera. Oh no, I think actually I did sand all this all this right here. Yeah, I mean it didn't do much. I just wanted to you know get it you know smooth it out a little bit. But their instructions worked well, and here I'm just saying like, oh, ha, it's too long, you know. So then I kind of marked with my finger where I wanted and did a, I did a straight, nice straight cut, man. I got a straight cut there using my calibrated eye. All right, cleaning up the pieces. And I went and got a wet, a wet um, paper towel, and I didn't get it wet enough, so I ducked it in my, dunked it in my water drink, my water glass. <laughs> Sanitation's the first thing. Now that's cool. You can already see it starting to curl. You know, and I didn't waste my, I didn't waste a whole lot of time. You know, between doing you know this part right here, and it, it's already curling. You can see it. It's probably curled up maybe um, I don't know eighth of an inch or better. Just to, just on its own, just sitting there. Again, we're using we're using the Elmer's wood glue, and I just kind of saturated everything because. You know the balsa soaks it in and lined it up at front there and then now i'm using my t i use a lot of t clips to hold it in um i thank you for following the build um, of the sig cadet you know um, four star 20 ep this this is going to be a fun plane um, to fly i just know it is um it'll probably be my you know I'll be so happy when I touch down from the Maiden. Um, thank you all for watching. Because it's going to end pretty quick here. Thank you for subscribing. Subscribe, become part of Team Let's Go Flying with Jeff and Tuco. Tuco is somewhere laying down. He got a bath and he's going to get a haircut this afternoon. You don't. He doesn't know that. Well, he probably does know that. He knows the deal. Then there, I'm just cleaning up. And later on, I went and put a clamp on the front just to make sure because it was popping up a little bit right there in the front. All right, here, here we're putting in the servo rails. 
and I had to put them back this far. It's a little back further than I wanted because the control rods weren't, you know, that's where they had to go, you know, so I could put the bends on them and, and get to the, um, the um, rudder and um, elevator. So I'm taking the servo and I'm making sure I get the space for the front front servo rail. After I found it, I went ahead and I marked it with a fine tooth, fine point. There I'm making sure I can, you know, making sure I'm kind of square. Just double checking the marks, medium CA come up, line up my marks. I got marks on the rail and marks on the side of the fuse. That's good. Now the the tubes for this, the control rods. I just glued it at the back. I'm going to glue it at the front once I get it trimmed to length and get the servo rod in it. So I secured it in the back. Yeah, because I almost wasn't going to put those on now, but I got thinking there's no way I could glue the back once I got once I got it rocking and rolling. Like I said, this video this video is going to end pretty quick. I think I do like a little tease tease sample of sanding, but it's 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 going to need a lot of sanding, like all the other pieces did. But you want to make sure you make sure you do a good job sanding because the covering, the monocoat, doesn't cover up uh, mistakes. It just highlights them. Uh, the video is getting ready to end again. So again, I thank you. Subscribe. Check out David yourself. Help him out. And uh, I, I used to drummel the trim. I, I, I was going to trim more with it, but I thought no, because if you screw up, you take off a lot. And I'd rather take my time trimming off the ends of the risers there. I want to thank you all again, man. It's been a blast building this kit. You know, we're we're not to the you know we're not to the touchdown yet, but you know we're getting there. And I think after I do the horizontal and the vertical covering, the wings and everything should go pretty well. Well, there you go, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, thanks for watching. This is Jeff.